sneak around, use air vents. You've never seen Die Hard? I'm 17, no, I've never seen fucking Die Hard. Rick and Morty season six, episode two, throws a new fly in the ointment, a monkey in the wrench, a pain in the, ah, you know the rest. The point is the show just made a major change to Morty that may have canonical consequences going forward. Why would she drop such a weird colloquialism right at the top of the video? Well, if you're asking that, then I think you haven't seen the episode and the major thing it's referencing yet. And so we must drop the spoiler warning. Spoilers ahead, this video is breaking down Rick and Morty season six, episode two, which means Full spoilers. If you aren't ready for that, I suggest you check out the episode and make your way on back right after. Onward! It's not every day one meets a fellow diehard enthusiast, Miss. <laughs> Call me diehard. Episode 2 is a diehard riff set in Blips and Chits, the most fun arcade in the multiverse! Summer, despite never having seen Die Hard, has to do a Die Hard against a Hans Gruber type guy played by Peter Dinklage, who is absolutely nailing it. What the hell was that? Die Hard, Die Hard! You can't just keep yelling Die Hard into a walkie talkie. Yes, Recapping a little, Rick and Morty are stuck inside the Roy, a life well lived arcade cabinet. You probably remember it as a time dilated sim game where one could essentially live a life as the player character Roy however they like with convincing realness in a relatively short amount of real world time. You could have Roy work at the carpet store or go off the grid like Rick did in Morty Night Run. It's a pretty damn good idea and impressive technology 10 out of 10 would attach brainstem to. Holy sh! This guy's taking Roy off the grid! <laughs> this guy doesn't have a social security number! Apparently what happened is Morty was playing the Roy game, the Die Hard terrorists attacked, the power went out with Morty trapped inside, which caused him to fracture into the entire world population of NPCs for some reason, and Rick jacked in to get him out before the game ends and he dies. Shouldn't such a futuristic game have better protection against power loss? Does it make sense? No, but who cares? Time for a Rick and Morty style adventure. In game, Rick needs to get Morty's consciousness out by convincing 5 billion NPCs to leave with him. So Rick as Roy starts a not religion to get all the Morty NPCs to exit the game with him and rejoin real Morty. But surprise, it's not easy and parts of Morty's brain, soul being, I don't know, want to stay behind in the game. Maybe they have convenient NPC identities. Maybe they hate the truth of Morty's reality as a disrespected subordinate. It's both, really. I mean, would you go to space with some guy who said you were one five billionth of a 14 year old boy? I wouldn't, but I didn't fight in a generic overseas war and don't sound like one of Justin Roiland's two voices. Anyway, Rick's work is cut out for him. Why's this always happened, man? I know, right? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Come here. Oh, jeez. Come here. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. One NPC, a teenage girl named Marta, becomes the de facto thought leader of the Morty NPCs, but even she can't get 100% agreement on Morty Exodus or otherwise, and this causes war and strife spanning in game decades. Meanwhile, Summer is dieharding the aliens who took over blips and chits and is doing a damn good job despite not knowing or caring about Die Hard, which the aliens and presumably many other civilizations regard highly. Next time you try to do a Die Hard, don't hide under a long table like the guy from Die Hard. Okay, I won't. Summer reads the Hans Gruber stand-ins Nakatomi Paradigm with the ending of Die Hard and pulls it off just as Rick and Morty pop out of the Roy game and everything seems pretty good, except Morty is off. Rick made a deal with Marta to let her stay in the game, which Rick in reality hooks up to a power source in a warehouse to maybe, I don't know, retrieve later. It's not clear what state Morty's in at the end of all this, but he's not his whole right self. Classic tower man. Almost two on the nose, right Morty? Sure. I mean, whatever you say, Rick, you know best. I trust you implicitly. Previously, Rick said it didn't matter if 100% of the Morty fragments joined him and was willing to leave with 92% of him, or even, quote, at least half. According to the deal he made with Marta and the end dialogue, only Marta remains in the game, which 
represents far less than 1% of Morty, but undeniably the most influential part and the one that actually stood up to Rick and led a fight against him. Marta represents a Morty who doesn't agree with Rick and acts according to Morty's own will and moral center as opposed to going along with Rick. If Marta dies in the game, the logic the show dictated earlier means that part of Morty dies permanently. So, a couple things can happen here. Marta dies with Morty's rebellious effectualness, or Marta uses her resources to keep herself alive somehow, and Rick, or perhaps Morty himself, makes a return trip to retrieve that part of him. Or the last option, the show doesn't return to this and Morty resets to normal, or he becomes more pliant and agreeable for at least the near future. What do you think? Will we revisit the Roy cabinet? Forget everything you know about Die Hard. And just go shoot that bitch! We don't have a safe, we just exchange tokens for digital Easter eggs. And here they are. The name of the episode is Rick, a mort well lived, which is clearly based on Roy, a life well lived. The name of the game first introduced in season two, episode two, Morty Night Run, which is a reference to, oh no, screw it, I'm not going down this rabbit hole. Well, hey, no way to get around this, but Summer does a Die Hard, which is obviously the whole of Die Hard. The whole episode is Die Hard, from Hans Gruber to the Tower Man to the scene shooting someone over codes, walkie talkies, yippee ki yay, ode to joy, the weird way Gruber says motherfucker. It's all Die Hard. I don't even want to call this an Easter egg. It's all very center, but here you go. Walkie talkie Die Hard, motherfucker. Die Hard. Further, on that note, the end credit scene riffs on Die Hard 3, even featuring the brother of the Hans Gruber guy. The scene has a specific reference to the sign McLean wore in that movie. It initially had a racial slur, which the characters call obviously too racist, and was changed to everybody in some versions, which the characters call too broad. Correct on both counts. The snowy base is possibly referring to Die Hard 2. And 8% of anything is expendable. 8% of pizza is crust. 8% of the Snyder Cut was Batman dreaming. I don't know what that reference is. We're in a video game. Rick makes reference to the Snyder Cut, and he's apparently worked out how much is the nightmare scene. Morty has not seen it. The warehouse where Rick has the Roy machine stored is somewhat reminiscent of Hangar 51, the place where the Ark of the Covenant is hidden in Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is subverted by the worker saying everything is surprisingly well cataloged and easy to find. Hey, is anybody that wants this later gonna be able to- Huh? Oh yeah, everything's cataloged and tracked. People got the wrong idea from the size of the space, but it's all supported digitally. So. And there you have it. Did you spot anything we missed? Did you want to talk about Inception? Because I almost put that in, but then I was like, no, that's too much of a stretch. Drop your thoughts in the comments, including what Marta's influence going forward could be. Thanks for watching this episode of Cannon Fodder. I'm Kim Horcher, and for more Rick and Morty, check out our season six premiere breakdown, complete with clips from our Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland interview. And don't forget to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Morty. I'm a 14-year-old boy in a video.